Hello everybody and welcome to the first Blux tutorial. I'm Ben, a creator of Blux. I created other software like Chatang, which uh, is very similar in the uh, interface with Blux. So Blux is a lighting software. You can download it uh, at this address or if you type Blux software, I guess you may find it here and actually other some other resource. And I'll be doing this tutorial on the newly released version 1.2.0. So on the website, you can actually see three different uh, download section, stable, beta, and bleeding edge. Uh, beta being like all the features that have been uh, tested internally. And then um, that, for the testing community uh, to, to test. And Bleeding Edge is really every update on uh, on the GitHub will be automatically exported to, through Bleeding Edge, so it's for very fast um, pace updates. So here we go. I'll be working on 1.2.0, which is new. If you don't have that, we can download it uh, already. So we can work on the same version. Flux is based on the organic UI framework, uh, which I developed, and this is why it looks like a lot like chatting. Um, so you will find all the panels that you can move along everywhere, detach, reattach anywhere. Um, yeah, and reset the view here. And we will find our inspector that we love. A lot of different uh, panels from uh, from Shateng, so we will now explain a bit what's happening there. So this is a lighting software, and it's trying not to be like any other lighting software. There are a lot of great lighting software already, uh, but I don't like to work the the way traditional light engineer works. Actually, if you're looking right now for a for a nice uh, traditional lighting system. Um, so like closer to what consoles are offering, I suggest you go and check Blinder Kitten. So Blinder Kitten .lighting. Um, a friend of, uh, of mine made it. It's actually also based on organic UI, but with a way more traditional approach, like console-like approach. Um, and yeah, it's uh, there are tutorials already on, on it. You can give it a try if you like want to move from Delight or other kind of software. But let's go back to Blux. Blux is made uh, with a lot of different concepts in it uh, that I will try to make the most sense out of it today. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's borrowing a lot of philosophy from, I would say, um, more Photoshop or After Effects Resolume-like uh, software where there are like effect chains that will modify along uh, along the way uh, different uh, different things. Um, yeah, so let's go. First, because it's a lighting software, we want to be able to connect an interface, which will be like be likely be DMX right now. So, let's say I want to con to control light uh, fixtures, uh, light objects, and then I want to control it through. Um, DMX adapter like uh, Antec USB Pro or Artnet or LCCN. So I create this module uh, interface here and on the right I can edit it and DMX type I will find here anything that I can control with it. The list could extend later. Right now it's uh, like quite actually uh, useful for most setups where people will want Artnet or SACN but you can also use DMX, Open DMX or DMX Pro or MK2. I actually don't have anything connected to my computer right now, so I won't uh, even try doing uh, anything on that. But basically, if on Artnet, uh, if you use Artnet, then you can change the base universe. Don't worry, you can send multiple universes at once. Uh, but this will be like the main one. If you don't only are working on one, it's uh, it will be useful to change it here instead of everywhere. 
Um, I would actually disable the inputs by default. Um, this is something that will maybe update it in next versions. And on output, I can just put the IP of the node, uh, the artnet node that I want to control. Um, so this is basically interface configuration. Now let's talk a bit about objects. Objects are uh, physical, a represent a physical object, physical light or physical fixture, prop, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so they can be of different types, but in blocks they are actually the same and just uh, with different content. So I will explain a bit later. So you can create your own objects here. You can create spotlights, which are already predefined uh, to reflect uh, a spotlight, meaning like one dimmer, basically. RGB lights will be a dimmer and a RGB component or color component. So, And then moving heads will uh, have both uh, dimmer and uh, color, but as well uh, orientation component with pan and tilt and stuff like that. And Bento, we won't talk about it in this tutorial. So let's say I have a spotlight. I would just create a spotlight here. Boom. It appears here and there. So this is a convenient uh, list view. And this is a grid view. If I create another one, boom. I, I got another one and here, and you will see that it just feels like this. It's easier to manipulate and um, monitor. So if I select my first one, what I can see here uh, is icon. So I can actually change it or choose a custom one. Uh, it's nice uh, because I can then see, uh, I can like easily see what, uh, what's happening there. Um, and I get the interface here. I won't really talk about that right now. Interface here is the interface that you want to connect it. There is only one interface here, so it decided automatically to, to link it to it, so it's easily set up. And then because it's a DMX interface, you get here the parameters for this object. Uh, so I don't want to change the net subnetter universe, but if I wanted to do that, I could just enable that and then change it here. So I won't do that because I'm good with using the default universe that is in the DMX interface. The start channel uh, though is really interesting and important. So this will be the DMX address that uh, you set up, uh, you set up in your uh, light system. So this one could be, for example, uh, one. And on the second one, I would maybe do six. So this will be on channel six and this will be on channel one. Okay, so my two lights are set up. Now I can move to components. I will actually change this so you can see it better. Components are the core of uh, what blocks makes blocks. Components are everything that defines what uh, an object can do. So right now we have just dimmers, like th these are uh, simple lights. So they only have a dimmer component, one dimmer component, which basically contains one value to change. So yeah, lights. What you see in green, the value here is the initial value, the start value that you can change. And the blue here, out value, will be the one uh, that is sent to the DMX interface. You can also see them here, and we will see how they can be different uh, with uh, the effect chain later. So here and here, you can see, and if I actually had something connected to my computer right now, like um, an adapter and a light, I would actually be able to see that already change. I can also use the shortcut Alt, and right click uh, and left click drag here to see um, to change it. So small shortcuts, very easy. What I can change here is a channel relative to this one. So one will be one here. It's the same as in um, uh, like in the in the documentation of the light because we have a dimmer. It doesn't much make more se uh, much sense to 
to change this number, but we will see for, for example, um, RGB lights or uh, moving heads that it actually becomes quite um, nice to, to be able to change it here, actually necessary. <laughs> so yeah, my dimmer is here, my dimmer is here. I can actually select multiple and already change things. I'm happy with that. Let's try now to add an RGB light. So my RGB light will be on, on channel 10, for example. I got a dimmer that we know already. This dimmer will be on channel one, like relative. So one on start channel 10 will mean that the dimmer is actually on channel 10. And I will show you later how to actually check that. And then what we see here is, so in components we got dimmer, but we also got color components. Because it's an RGB light, it can output colors. The way Blux works in, in for colors is that it allows for very complex ways of creating colors um, and abstracts the, the whole channel control part. So we don't really care about whether you have an RGB or an RGBW or uh, with Ember um, and that the channels are in weird places. Uh, what we want is to be able to control with a color wheel. So what you define is actually a color and shed, um, blocks will take care of it. Here I can change the color mode because if you like a palette, simple palette will be RGB. If I had actually a white, a white uh, channel in it, I could just set RGB white and now everything here will actually output on the four. So here would only be white channel and here will, will, would be a mix of the RGB and white. It's already optimized, so you don't have to care about a separate white uh, channel and animating that separately from the color. Here, I see again, so in my dimmer, I had my DMX parameter, out value channel one, yeah. In color now, I have also my DMX parameters. All of that is because I selected a DM, DMX interface here, right? And in out my color channel now, I, can, I could say two. So what it means is starting on channel 10, it will be first value is dimmer, and then second, third, and fourth will be RGB, and fifth will be white right now. So I will have uh, four, five channel to, to manipulate there. Uh, if it was, for example, dimmer and maybe strobe and then RGB, I would just say three here. Um, all of that is basically, all those numbers are the ones that you would find in the documentation for the fixture. So I will just put, uh, keep the second here and continue. So what you see here, it's already changing, right? Now, so here, you can see it changing. Now I will show you how to check on your setup, on your actual uh, physical setup, uh, how it how it goes. And yeah. So I can see the light changing here. If it's well set up, then uh, I can already see it uh, on my stage, for example. Uh, but if there are any problems, I will show you a quick way to easily set up and uh, verify that everything is working. So I got my three light, but I will go here in the DMX channel tester. And here I can actually select the DMX interface, this one. It will become pink, which means that it's right now not controlled by the view here now, but by this grid. So this represents the 512 uh, channels of a universe that is set up in the interface. And if I click on any on those numbers, it will send, it will flash the value and send the value that is uh, here. So it will flash uh, 255, for example, on any of those. I can, so it's already super easy to say, for example, if I want to check that my light is on six, I just do this and if it lights up then you know that uh, you should create a light on this one. Let's say I have another one on eight. I can actually do this. I verify that it lights up on the, my stage and then I right click, create from this channel 
spotlight. And now my spotlight is created. I can see it here as well. And it's already with channel eight. So everything is already set up for that. I can also, while I'm still testing, if I want to check for a LED power, for example, so a RGB light, maybe the dimmer needs to be always on for other things to, to happen or to, for, for me to be, be able to see the lights or maybe the strobe. So what I can do is also Alt, uh, keep Alt and just move uh, up and down here. So I can actually keep more channels open at the same time. So let's say I would have something on 39, then I can just do that. It will put the dimmer on and then the R, G and B, for example, would be there, right? So this is a really good way to easily, uh, to easily both check uh, what's on the, what's on your stage, how the setup is, and to check that this should be already working. And if it's not working there, it's not a bother to create other lights. Uh, if you're doing it uh, straight in a the theater. The opposite is also interesting. If I remove the channel testing mode here, now you see that this is not uh, any more controlled from there, but instead the channel tester will actually view what's actually being sent from the object. So I see my spotlight that is set on one here. I see my spotlight set on six. And I also see my RGB light, my dimmer on 10, and my RGBW, so let's say I put a red, red would be on 11, because I'm on 10 here and channel 2 here, so 1 will be 10 and 2 will be here 11, right? And then I can just see all the four values RGBW, so if I'm full on white, I will see this full, right? And then I can just see how it moves, all the channels move together to make the color. So very efficient. Great, so we've seen how we can test and check that the values that we want are good. Now I will tell you how to make really simple setups really fast. So let's say I will remove everything. Let's say I have, for example, four lights, uh, just spots, and four um, LED power. I can actually choose here to see them big or small, whatever. So I can easily say, okay, I want, so I could first rename them, right? So power, uh, power one, Part two, part three, and this may be the uh, back, for example. And here will be left one. Oh, left one. So always rename everything. It's really a good practice. Left two, right one, right two. Okay. So that's good. I will save that actually. Up. And now I got I got them left right right down. I'm good with that. Okay, and now we can start saving some states using the scenes. Scenes are here, and for a very simple uh, project, it could be just enough to set some values. So let's say I want like first my lights here, and I just create a scene, and it stores those values in it, the, the dimmer here, the value, right? And maybe, so this will be intro, and let's say I have an act one where my back here is not so much so, so bright, and this one as well, but maybe I want one of each here, and I will just create another state. And this will be act one. Oh. Act one. So now I can just load this or this and it will smoothly transition between those two. I could also 
let's say I don't want a red, so I will just change the color here. Same for, for this one. And I resave that, so right click on Act 1, Save. And now it will go from this to that. So from there, we'll check a bit what we can do with the scene. So I have the save and load, the same as I have here. So it allows me to quickly uh, save whatever state uh, I'm in. Direct load here will be without transition. So it's also very efficient to, to do things like this. Um, if you want a black, for example, or like, um, you know, functional uh, light. The load time will be the time to transition from whatever state it, it is to this one. So it, you, you don't need to, to be exactly on, on, on one thing. The, the concept we've seen is that it will just transition from whatever you are to the, to the, to the scene. So I can actually do things um, manually like this. And when I load this, it will smoothly go to that. So this is also very strong because it, seem, it, it, it means that you can actually have manual control over things, like modify things, and still be able to go back smoothly. You don't have jumps. So load time here, if I put two seconds now, um, let's say I'm here and I will do this, it will go in two seconds. Uh, the weight transitions is actually controllable and it's with this loading curve. So right now you'll see that it's smooth on the in and out of the curve but I could easily do some things like this, for example, even more if I add another point like this, and now it will be way more aggressive as um, transition. So if I'm here and I load, you, see, you will see that it goes very fast and then it slows down on, on the end. The opposite is also true. I could do something like this, um, for example, I mean, very arbitrary. And then if I do this, it will first go slow and then uh, go high. So it's like this, kind of shy and boom, in the end. And I can go crazy. I could do something like this. And then the transition is kind of weird, but it will go like from this to this, to this, to this, and then go, you know. So yeah, there are a lot of things to, uh, to check here, but already you can have a lot of fun uh, behaviors. Um, and then a scene can contact also sequences and effects that we will uh, see later. So right now I have my scenes and I can actually uh, continue uh, creating other scenes and do whatever I want with it. And basically I, I have my own uh, system. Um, I will have my own show. But what if I want to have more dynamic, uh, like fun stuff because it's quite static right now. So this is what, uh, this is where we will use the effect chain. The effect chain that you will be able to see here, if I double click on something, I will be able to see here everything that happens between the first uh, initial value and the end value. So right now there is nothing but we will see that we can add some modifiers, some effects. If I click on my object here, I can see this effect here and I can actually go there and change something. So if I want to affect the dimmer, I will go to the dimmer section and then I will have a lot of different things to do. So override is the most simple effect. It basically changes the value. So what you would need to understand is an effect takes the input value and outputs another value, either depending on the input value or not really taking care of it. So this one, for example, the override, by default an effect is um, disabled, so I would just enable it. I can do it from here. I can select my things and do it from here, the same. This is a representation of this effect. So if I click on it, actually I am editing only this effect. So what do I do? What do I see? I see my initial value here being um, around 0 0.5, so half, right? And here I can read multiple things. I have my effect that is an override, so I can change my number here. And I see that it's affecting directly the output of this effect and then the output of 
the actual object because there is no more effect after that. So this last value will straight be going to the to the object. Uh, the same as what I see here. So what is interesting here is that it's basically completely overriding. And why is that? For two reasons. First, I'm in blend mode override here, which means that I'm surpassing, um, I'm, I'm like taking over the, um, the initial value without really take, uh, like using it as a base. So this is why, but also because the weight here, the weight of the defect is one, like 100%. If I was at zero, I would have the effect would have no effect. If I'm at like a small percentage, you see that it's changing, but not so much. And the less weight it has, the more it will go into the first one. So it's a linear blending between whatever this outputs and um, the initial value. So weight of zero is basically a pass through. Weight of one means that uh, the output of this effect will be fully take, uh, taken, care, uh, taken care of. But that's not only that. Because I'm in blend mode override now and wait on 100%, yes, it takes only this value. But if I go in blend mode add, for, is, for instance, boom, what it, what's it doing? It's the same as like Photoshop and uh, like blend modes for, for pictures. It will take this value and adds whatever value I have here on top of that, and we'll, it will do it 100%. So right now, I'm let's say I'm in something like 0 0.2 here, and I will add 0 0.3, so I am at 0 0.5 in the end. It's like this plus that. My weight is still functional, right? It will blend between weight 0 is this one, and weight 1 is this one plus this one, because I'm on that on add. I could also subtract. I can multiply, so let's say I'm on 0.8, for example, and now I do a 0.5 here, I will have a 0.4. So it's also very efficient, for example, to have multipliers and things like uh, overall dimmers and stuff like that. Remember that this effect only lives in this right now, in this object. The effects can be applied the same way, exactly the same way, throughout the whole software at different places. And there is a chain, a fixed order, that goes from the most local, the, the smallest, so object level, to the widest, which will be the global effect that you can see here, that will affect everything. There are still a lot of ways to filtering and stuff like that, but you, you, you will always have the same uh, effect chain to work with, which is predictable. So this effect, not so interesting, but sometimes can actually be really helpful. I want to animate a bit more. So I removed my effect and I check other like dimmer and I have curve map, which can be interesting. Noise, for example, if I click here, now I have, so I remember weight on one override here, which will mean that whatever is happening here is exactly what will be output. This one doesn't have anything uh, to, to bring right now. It's not, it's not modifying anything. But the same way I could do things, um, I, I could take it, I will show you later. So what, what do I have on the noise? I have speed, great. And actually animate the speed, you know, like there is no breaking. So it's kind of nice. Time offset, we will see that later. Time offset by ID as well. Noise type, I like we would do a pearl in, for example, and then it's like more of a, of a noise, for example. And then I have my frequency, which also this one is kind of uh, jumping, but it's kind of one thing that you want to set fixed like this. So five per second, for example, if I'm on a sign, it will mean that it's five loops per second. Um, and then on the value range, very easily, I can say I want actually this to be between, let's say, zero, uh, 0 0.1 and 0 0.3. And I have this small amount, right? So let me check frequency here. And so I will have that, it's nice. What I can do from there, let's put the speed back to one, good. What I can do is the same as the other one. I can put add here 
And now it will take this value and add whatever uh, is generated from 0 0.1 to 0 0.3. So now I get this. And I, I could also, because I can have negative value, say I want to oscillate bit, uh, like in the middle of this one. So I'm 0 0.5 and now I want like to oscillate between this. So minus 0 0.2 and plus 0 0.2. And now when I'm 0 0.7, I will be, you can see it from 0 0.3 to 0 0.7 when coming from 0 0.5. So you can see that this is affecting and it will always be uh, doing an oscillation in this value. So that's nice. Um, I can say to mean, max, so let's say max, for example, will, ma will mean that if I oscillate between 0 and 0 0.5, for example, it will always, it will generate this and take the maximum value between this one and this one. So right now it won't never, it will never go below this value. And you can see like how it stops and goes back and it would be there. Same as mean. Mean will mean that it will always take the minimum value between this one and this one. So it's actually really uh, good as well if you want to animate things, but to, you want to be sure that it never goes up uh, more than a certain value. So very efficient for that. Let's put it on uh, override again or actually add, for example. So now I'm oscillating like this. So I have my slow oscillation, let's say, like this. I have a slow oscillation. And I want on top of that to add another oscillation, uh, smallest one, sm smaller one. So I can go to dimmer, again, noise, for example. And I will activate that. And I will have a really small, like this, still on add with a big frequency. And now what you can see is that it's using this value. So starting here, oscillating around this value from my first noise, which I will call low noise and fast noise, or slow noise actually. So I have my slow noise here that I can see, and then I have fast noise around it. So it's basically oscillating, but still building it. And this is what will be my end value. So you can see how quickly you can create like complex effects just by adding things like this. And let's say I don't want this. I, I, I like the settings and it took me a while, but I want to just like dim it a bit. I can just be I have the weight just a bit less. And you can see that I'm still getting this uh, oscillation around it, but it's far less um, uh, intense, right? So I could do it here. I could also change the range here. Could do a lot of things, but it's actually very efficient. Also, just you know, easy things. You can, can I have it lighter, like something? Yes, for sure. You can do this. Um, all the effects have a lot of things. Uh, we can also uh, see how it goes. For example, if I remove the slow noise and I take an automation instead, and I will put the automation on top of it, on top at first. So now I, I, I want I, I want to keep my automation. Oh, maybe I need to recharge. Yes, automation and that's fast noise because I want first the automation and then my fast noise here. My fast noise is good and automation basically is a curve. So it's also a, a sign right now, but you could do things like this. And now you can see that it's animating this like boom, play toe, and then here, doom, boom, 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 doom, doom. So it's also a very efficient ways to do a lot of things. Curves actually can do a lot of things like this. How? How is it possible to do this like this? Hmm. So automation can do a lot of things. It's really powerful. And then it becomes really, you know, efficient to do a lot of things like this. Okay. So actually I often not use uh, effects 
on an object level because you don't want to set up that for all of them. So let's talk, I remove everything. I again have just this and let's talk now about groups. Groups are here and they are fantastic. Those groups are non-exclusive, but they allow to uh, group in logical way your uh, different props, different objects. Uh, you could say, for example, all the parts or the left side uh, or the face or the ones that are uh, together for this particular act. So let's say I will create a, a power group, for example, and maybe one that will be a thunder group. So I will, my power group, I will put, I will select all of them, those with shift or control and just slide them there, boom, it's blue. And when I'm uh, selecting it, I can see my all, all my parts here, right? And what I can do now is the same, add an, as an, uh, add an effect. And let's say I put a noise. You can see now that it's affecting all of them, right? So same, I can do things like this, very efficient. I can do sender and th sender I can also, so I can just disable, I will just disable this noise right now because it's stressing. And thunder, I know that I want this one in the back, for example, those three, I want them in this group. So you can see that uh, thunder is, um, uh, thunder is uh, using those three and par is using those four, right? Uh, with a high, um, purple highlight. So they don't, they're not exclusive, which is very efficient for that because you can do basically whatever you want. Uh, like as many groups as you want, it's, uh, it's very light. Um, doesn't have performance issues or whatever. And then in my sender, for example, I can do maybe something like, um, let's say, uh, yeah, a noise, very fast noise like this, you know? So this would be my sender and whenever I, I want, I can like bring it, you know, zoom. So I can just have it at weight zero for now, but I can still have this one. And then in sender, sometimes doing this, and you can see this one is affected by two, the two of them, noise from the par group and noise from the sender group. So when I change this weight here, it doesn't change just for it, right? It's, it's, this is the object that resides in Thunder and this is affecting the whole group. Another really good, cool, uh, cool things about group is that it, it kind of knows that it contains that. And because of this, you can use the time offset by ID that you can see here, right? And it will use locally the IDs. Uh, well, like zero, one, two, three, or one, two, three, four. So if I put something like, I will offset them by, for example, um, a tenth of a second, or maybe a bit more like this, you can see now that there are offsets. This one is, uh, let's say a fifth, a fifth of second later, and this one later than this one, and this one later than this one. So you can easily create chaser effects of things like this. But remember that it's not about the intensity being offset. It's about the whole effect being um, being uh, changed in time. So if I put a pearl in now, you can see that whatever happens, it will just be offset like this. What's nice with that is if I put also like for a noise, for example, and a big value, like more five seconds, there is no relation. You, can, you can't really feel the relationship. This one will be five seconds later than this one, but you don't care. It's just the feeling is that they are all random and you only need one effect to have this kind of randomness. So this is how you can also create effects uh, for global stuff, um, but still not all of them. If I go into global effects, I can actually hear the same. For example, if I want to have a master dimmer, something that I can easily um, change for uh, for putting full black. I can just put that to multiply. So in my effect group, in my global effect, now I'm multiplying by one 
with the weight of one, everything. So it doesn't change anything. I'm multiplying, right? You can actually see it here. Like multiply like a, a master demon. Great. It's here now, the yellow one that is always the last one. So if I put zero, it will multiply to zero and, and nothing will come out, right? But then I can say, I can easily then change this one to multiply to dim whatever is out, what, uh, whether it's animated or not animated, it will multiply in the end. So by now, I hope you understand how effects works and how they like get together to form a chain of effects. There are a lot of things that I won't cover in this tutorial, so I will do other ones uh, with specific topics, uh, especially about um, um, more uh, complex stuff. So effects are not the only place where So groups are not the only place where you can put effects. You can put them in objects, you can put them in groups. In between, there is scenes. This is actually very efficient. So let me just remove all those effects here, right? And here, let's say in act one, I like that. But then in uh, act two, what I actually want is to have some animation there. So in act two, I will just put that like this and I want them to, to be uh, also a bit noisy, for example. So in effect here, I can go into dimmer. Same, those, those, those effects are the same everywhere. And I can just put my noise here and that will affect everything. So I have my noise and on at one, it will slowly transition to no effects. And here it will again transition to the effects, no jump, Never, it's transitioning smoothly between whatever this is generating and whatever this is generating. And you can see here the effect being affected or not, depending on uh, the scene that is um, used. So very also, this is dynamic and it's always like updates when, uh, when the effect chain is changing and effect chain is changing dynamically. But maybe I still, in the act, only want the this group to animate and not this one, right? Uh, and it's not because I'm in a scene that I shouldn't be able to do that. And this is where filters come to um, being handy. So in an effect, my noise, for example, I have my parameters and then I have my filters. And I can filter different things. I can filter by ID. Actually, you can't see the ID right now, but it's... If I do this, you can see them here. If I click on a, on an object, this is a global ID here. One is here. So you can also see them here, whether one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And if I'm on, uh, on my act two now, actually, if I also do this, I can see this little uh, icon that say that there are effects uh, applied to this, uh, to this. So it's easy also to see which ones are static and which ones are uh, animated. And filter by ID here, I can choose some IDs. So now zero, this one will be uh, will be affected by it. Uh, but I could say yeah, this one is zero. So they're exclusive. Now this one is not zero because I put this one at zero. And now this one will be affected by it. So it's not about the actual object, it's about the global ID that it gets. And this is the abstraction uh, number one. <laughs> Act to filter ID zero. I can actually put more IDs and say, I want zero, three, and four. And now I get only those three affected by this effect. But I can also create a filter by group, which is much efficient, much more efficient if I want to target things, um, uh, a lot of different things. Like if I filter like this, now it will be the par. And let's say I'm another gig and there, I'm on another gig and there is uh, another light that I want to add. I can just add a second lag back two, for example. So I will have my back here and my back two. And back two, I can just put it in the par. And now it's also affected by all of that. 
So it makes it very uh, easy to update a setup for different, uh, update a creation for different setups. And I can more groups as well, right? Always the same. I could ex uh, invert as well, saying that now I want uh, anything that is not that. Currently, there is a bug on that. Maybe on, uh, yeah. So, effects, uh, effects in scenes, that works like that. And easily, I can just swap. Great. So already with that, I can do a lot of things. Um, this is not the only thing that you can do in scenes because they contain their own effect, but and you can save the different things like colors and um, and um, dimmers. But you you can also affect the um, weight. By default, you, you you will save weight of each effect. So let's say I'm creating another effect now on my power group, which is, let, let, let's call it, so let, let's put it on Sunder actually. Sunder, I will put uh, noise, for example. And let's see, okay, it's like this. My Sunder, like this. Okay, I have my sender on those three, right? This um, noise. And I created this effect after having created my scene. So by default, it will be there will be a weight at zero on all of them, which is what they should do because I don't want this to be affected. So my scenes always look like what they should look like when I create, when they looked like when I created them. And because I create a new effect later, I don't want it to be uh, taken care, uh, like animated inside uh, all of this. And this is because the save mode is, is on, on save weight only. I could put exclude and now it won't be affected by scenes. So if I want something general, uh, maybe I don't want here to, to, to have something like, for example, this one same, save weight only, and now it's at zero, right? This one I would maybe want to exclude so I know that it's not used, it's my main dimmer and I want to always be like this. Actually, exclude from scenes here will allow me to not even take care of that and I can have as many effects as I want here and none of them will be taken because the exclude from scene here is on. So in sender, I have my noise and I actually want the, the weight only. Right now, it's on weight zero everywhere. But let's say this is my sender scene uh, sunder scene, and I, I, I would have more sunder scenes, then I can also just, oops, put my weight here on one and save that. And now you see that it will not change. And you can see now that when I load my scene one here, it will go into weight one and the other one will just be at zero. So what's good with that is that let's say I have another scene later. I can also use the same effect. I don't need to duplicate the effect. Those two ones will uh, be able to have the, the same. So if I want it to, to be different, uh, let's say I want it slower, for example, or more intense like this, then it will be the same thunder effect on both scenes. So this way you could also like prepare actually a lot of effects in groups and have uh, just your scenes here being uh, a mix of different effect that you put before. Uh, that you set up before and just like play with that. Um, so you, you you could easily just have like a library of effects in different groups or even uh, in the master group here and just animate that. Um, it's another way of creating. Uh, Blocks is about allowing a lot of different ways to, to optimize what you're doing and avoid uh, duplicating and, uh, you know, copying a lot of effects and things. So there is always a way 
to only create once what you want to do and then be able to recall it if you need to. There are a lot of, uh, a lot of advanced ways as well to, to, to do that uh, and still have a lot of uh, individual control. But yeah, right now um, we will stick to the basics. <laughs> so we talked about effects, we talked about scenes, we talked about um, groups. There is something that we didn't talk too much, uh, not so much uh, about yet is colors, how to deal with colors. So actually I could the same way, let's say in a scene, in this scene, I want, um, okay, let's create another one, boom. In this scene, I don't want this. Uh, I want only those color par to full like this. Boom. So I'm here, it's doing this, and that's perfect. But what I want is also to change the colors here. And colors are a totally different way of working between uh, blocks and other software. Um, when I'm in, uh, I'm in uh, my effect, the colors here, I can override. I don't have a lot of, of choice, but that's okay because in override color, I'm not just setting the color, I'm setting a full pattern. So let me just override that. Right now it will full, it will force to, to, to red, right? Because here I'm in solid color, so I can change whatever I want. And then at least uh, already I can only, um, I don't, I need only to change this color and all of the things that have color, all of the objects that have color will change. So I like this and I'm going here. But maybe I want something like more interesting and then in solid color, I can actually change for a lot of different things. Um, some are still not working, but the generic are actually uh, more than enough for most creation. Let's say I want a rainbow and now it will already cycle through the rainbow. But then if I do a time offset by ID here, you can see that I will have, let me just create way more so you can see. <laughs> so now I have a lot of pi, uh, LEDs and I can, it's already affected by it because it's on the scene, so it's affected, uh, affecting everything. So yeah, with that, I can already have my rainbow with like some delay between them, like this, like this. I can change brightness, saturation, uh, the density. I can change a lot of things. Um, so I can also put a point, for example, so strobe, noise. Noise is also very nice. You get this randomized, but then when you do a time of set by idea again, you will have, like if, we, if you put a big number, then you will see that you get this nice um, noise, spread noise, like super fast. And you can just have the balance, for example, adjust the balance so it's more background than front colors when you go negative, and this is um, more up. And you could even do like something like this and like this and and if i put more contrast for example okay let, let's put black again and now you can have this kind of stars you know like just some uh some time so it's 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 really efficient um so this is colors and colors you can do different things same for point let's say i want a just a, a chaser a fun chaser I don't want to mess up with the with the dimmers. I just want to spread something through through them. I have my num props here, and num props should be actually renamed. But let's say I have one, two, three, four, five. So I have eight, uh, seven here. So it's like nine, uh, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I have fifteen props, so I can just put fifteen here. And now my position. Let's do this you see that I can, can just go uh, through them like this. So right now they are uh, checking because it starts at four, goes to 15 and goes back. You, you see so, so, some weird stuff for sure. But then if I was to create a group with all of those lights, and that I filter here by group. 
Okay, and I will call it um, LEDs. Now you can see that it's actually <coughs> taking the ID mode is in use local in my filter group. So when filtering here, it will at the same time reassign a local ID that is basically the order in this list, which makes it also very efficient because I only want to target that. So there are high chances that I actually want to use this order as well. So the position here now makes total sense between all of that. And yeah. And I can spread a bit. So now I can have something like that goes like this. And the blend modes also work for colors. So let's say I have this and I want to do another thing that basically would be um, some rainbow, let's say. I would, for example, I could be able to put my rainbow before. So let's put a rainbow here. Boom. And if I disable, I get this beautiful colors. And when I do this, override 100%, uh, wait at, uh, at one. So we know what it does. It completely uh, surpasses it with, with those two colors. But now I can actually, so let's put a white here and I will go in multiply. And what happens is that it multiplies by white, which means let's the color pass and multiply by black would be multiplied by zero, which means uh, black. So now I can actually like act as a mask, whatever uh, is happening before. So this is very efficient to strobe, to, to do a lot of things. I could also put that in add. And now what you see is um, not so visible actually, but if I do this, if I remove the, lower the brightness, you can actually see before the, the rainbow. And on top of that, I have my other lights that are adding to the first one and capping at white. So I hope this makes sense and brings also a lot of uh, inspiration to, you know, understand that uh, basically you can do pretty much whatever you want. Just so you know, when I, for example, click here, I only see my dimmer chain because I'm checking my dimmer. But if I go into color, now I'm actually able to see the different uh, steps of my uh, filter. So here you can see all the colors that are affected. And if I go into this one, for example, it's my point. And you can see how now I'm in full white and this is like passing the colors and uh, we go slowly to black and it will go that because the point is affecting that. So you can have fun with a lot of effects and colors and stuff, scenes, groups. And already with that, you can basically create most, um, most uh, shows with ease, like in, in no time. Let's talk about one last thing for the tutorial and then uh, I let you sleep on that. Let's say I have, let's remove this. Let's say I have uh, one scene that has a choreography with a music. So let's go into scene one here or scene two maybe. Okay, let's go into scene two and I will call it choreography. Perfect. Ah. Choreography. We've seen all these effects here, actions we don't really care. Sequence is the one I want to talk to you about. I can add a sequence, right? And you will see here that there is this little icon of sequence. Very handy. You can see that this one contains a sequence. Those ones contains effects. If I double click on this little icon, I get my sequence editor here, which is the same as uh, in chatting, but with different layer types. We get the audio, this one we, we know about. So let's load the music. I just double click and up, I put this music. Um, So maybe you don't hear that. I don't know. Uh, maybe you do. So here, 
I, I get my, my music and already if I'm loading this and I'm loading back the choreography, it will start playing here. So this becomes really easy also to have if you are like managing acts on a cabaret or things like this, like very easy to synchronize. People come, if you, you hit load, it loads the music and you can do whatever you want. But more on that is here, you can then add effects uh, layer. An effect layer will add effects temporarily. So I'm my sequence is loaded and it's going through that. So now if I want, for example, to have a color, let's say I will create a dimmer or let's say color. Maybe actually I want to start with a dimmer like this. Um, yeah, okay, no, color. And here, I will just, just put this effect just here. And I will set, for example, a noise, very fast noise, like this, with a different time of set. What happens is it goes there. So for the time that is there, you can see this effect taking place and going back, right? So this effect has filters, has everything that you want to uh, use. And it's very efficient now to just to use it to put in time everything. And I can just put another one, uh, for example, sorry about that. Another override color that would just be here and will be, for example, on white, and I will fade out. Boom. So I just enable this fade out and I get this nice handle here, which will just fade towards everything. So red here is on the, it's on the, um, it's because it's a initial value, right? If I want to be sure that there is only black, I could have an effect here, uh, black. Um, wait. Yeah. Oh no, effects are going after. This is a room. This is wrong. Um, so I could actually have something like a background effect or just taking the time. I would just do it quickly. Putting this one on black. This, I always put actually things on black here um, and just duplicate that. So again, just working, right? It's bec because I don't, uh, I don't use scenes for, for saving this time. It's just affecting whatever has that. So I could also, if I want to put, to put, put them back on LEDs, I can just do this. Um, and now they're here. I would just remove the ones that I Delete it, up, and I get all of them. Perfect. Um, actually, I could do another group with only half of them, for example, half LEDs, and say that, uh, for example, this I only want on uh, the, the first half, so I can just filter by group here and say half LEDs. So it will go like this and then perfect. I can also add another effect and filter the whole layer the same way. So if I do this, if I were to remove that, put it here, uh, not this one, this one. And let's say, okay, let's say high blue like this, we say it fade out, boom. And the whole things will have a group filter. Boom. So, so now it's also easy to say, okay, to reserve this lane just for this one. So again, different ways of working that you can choose either like at a, at a block level or at this level, you can actually do uh, um, all of them at once. Like you can filter this and then refilter inside, inside here from the already filtered one there. Um, and you can 
and you can then do very quickly this kind of things and it becomes really quick so what we could do as well uh small other things that we can do with the timeline let's say i continue and then from here i want actually a rainbow again nah colors rainbow like this effects with a fade in actually if i if i just do this i want to show you that if i do this and i create for example no, another noise here uh, very subtle and i just cross them they will already be automatically fade right from one to another you can see that smoothly transition between the two effects when they are on the same layer but what we can do as well is um, so i have this I'm happy with that and at some point from here for example so i have my effects and here i want a strobe on only some of them let's say the first half because it's already there and I can actually have them overlap. It's the same. It will be a, the chain effect from bottom to up. So now if I do this here and I do some things like, let's say a strobe with some time offset or even no time offset, actually, it can be really nice and very fast strobe. Now, so you can see that that we, it will affect at some point both of them. Actually, I should put that to add, and now it will keep the colors. And I can also do a fade in on that. Perfect. And then whatever we want to have here, maybe it's the same actually. So you see how it becomes really efficient to use that. I will show you one last thing that is really nice in uh, to to get very precise in timelines, uh, and this is um, animation. So, for example, I have all of that, and I want to animate those ones. Let's say I will create another effect on a dimmer this time. Actually, this one I will call just par. And this will be filtered on the par. And now I can just change this, right? Override, weight 100. I know that at that point, I really want to just decide which value is it. I don't really care about what's happening before. But I don't want just to create, because I could create one here and another here that has different values like this, and then they will like transition from this to this, you know, interesting, but maybe there is another way. Yes, there is. You can just right click and edit. And then there is a value here. I could actually edit and I, I can change any parameters on any effects. But if I change the value now, I see here uh, my value between the zero and one, and I can change it the same. So I just zoom in do it like this and I can easily now create really fun stuff like this. Uh, let's say like this. Great. And now you can see that they are animated throughout the thing. The value is animated. So you can also get very, very precise now with one effect here, but you can add on top of that whatever you want. So it becomes really, really powerful because you can only, you, you only need to create the effects where you want. And if it becomes too complex, you can split, it, split them in different effects that will each be simpler. So this was um, introduction to blocks. There are a lot of other things that we didn't cover there. Uh, Blux also has a dashboard, same as Shatting, uh, Parrots, Detective, whatever. Uh, there are custom parameters that you can set for uh, overriding things. Uh, 
you can do basic mappings and controls. Um, I will sh I will show you one last thing because it's actually very important. This is basically why I did this software. When you go to preference, you can here say, okay, let's not use 42,000, let's for 45,000 local boards. And when you activate enable remote control here, now if I go to Chatagne, if you don't know Chatagne, follow other tutorials, and I will go to OSC query in Chatagne. I can actually see blocks remote control on power 45,000. And when I do that, I already get all of the effects, all of the scenes, all of the everything, the whole hierarchy that Plux is exposing. Meaning that if I want to change things from there, I could actually, let's say my effect group here, um, or the, the thunder that I, ha that I have here, if I want to animate it by hand or automatically from Chatagne, I can already do this in thunder. I have my effect, my noise, here I have my weight. And you can see that it is changing the weight effectively from one to another. Same goes for the scenes, for example. I can easily do go an intro and I get the same, like load one scene. I can change the effects. I can change whatever I want from there. So I can change the, the LED bar and everything is a, it, it can, can be changed. So this is a very, very, very efficient way to control blocks from outside and very fast. And then if you have already like controls or you want to send uh, something to the sound uh, technician, but at the same time launch something there, then you know how to do it, state, and you do whatever you want. This is not a chatting tutorial, but yeah, this is how easy it can be to create light shows. I hope you enjoyed that and it was somehow understandable. <laughs> um, thank you. And see you next time.